Lines that are parallel meet at infinity, Euclid repeatedly, heatedly urged, until he died, and so reached that vicinity. In it, he found that the damned things diverged. These lines appear in the introduction to a chapter of Martin Gardner's The Colossal Book of Mathematics, credited to Pete Hein, Grooks IV. The delightful little expression of mathematical silliness enchanted me as a kid. So succinct and precise, I was captivated by the flourish of effective language. I'd repeat it often to impress math teachers. i dream of what sort of strange play or movie Grooks IV must be. This may be the first poem I really fell in love with. Many years later, the line surfaced in my memory, and I finally started looking for Grooks. What I found was way better than a lost sci-fi relic or a forgotten musical. Grooks, you see, are a particular style of poem devised by Danish mathematician and designer Pete Hein around the 1940s. They are short poems that depend on clever wordplay, precise language, and careful rhyming schemes. He published them under a pseudonym Krumbel as a way to celebrate the oppressed Danish language during the Nazi occupation of Denmark. He hoped that readers would enjoy the momentary distraction from the anxiety of their uncertain times. All in all, he wrote over 10,000 Grooks, and then translated many of them into English and later Esperanto as part of his efforts to promote a universal language. Piet was also an accomplished mathematician, game designer, city planner, furniture designer, scientist, and philosopher. You could say he was an old-school laser fractal space wizard. Well, about once a year ago, I read a bunch of collected Grooks, and I always end up smiling, so this time I want to share with you a handful of Grooks that I utterly adore. All right, this first one is The Road to Wisdom. The Road to Wisdom, well, it's plain and simple to express. Air and air and air again, but less and less and less. The Paradox of Life a bit beyond perception's reach, I sometimes believe I see that life is two locked boxes, each containing the other's key. A psychological tip. Whenever you're called on to make up your mind and you're hampered by not having any, the best way to solve the dilemma you'll find is simply by spending a penny. No, not so that chance shall decide the affair while you're passively standing there moping. But the moment the penny is up in the air, you suddenly know what you're hoping. If you know what I mean. A poet should be of the old-fashioned, meaningless brand. Obscure, esoteric, symbolic. The critics demand it. So if there's a poem of mine that you do understand, I'll gladly explain what it means till you don't understand it. Living is. Living is a thing you do, now or never. Which do you? Similarity. No cow's like a horse, and no horse like a cow. That's one similarity, anyhow. Out of time. My old clock used to tell the time and subdivide diurnity, but now it's lost both hands and chime. It only tells eternity. Naive. Naive you are if you believe life favors those who aren't naive. A consolation grook. Losing one glove is certainly painful, but nothing compared to the pain of losing one, throwing away the other, and finding the first one again. <laughs> A grook on long-winded authors. Long-winded writers I abhor, and glib prolific chatters. Give me the ones who tear and gnaw their hair and pens to tatters, who find their writing such a chore they only write what matters. Vita Brevis. A lifetime is more than sufficiently long for people to get what there is of it wrong. Making an effort. Our so-called limitations, believe, apply to faculties we don't apply. We don't discover what we can't achieve until we make an effort not to try. Aren't those fun? Piet really had a way with words, and there's a lot more of these out there in books and articles around the internet. If you want to learn more about him, there's a great website at pietheine.com that goes over his wide range of contributions to culture. That's P-I-E-T-H-E-I-N.com. I hope I've been able to introduce a few, of you, a few of you to one of my favorite writers. Which poet did you fall in love with first? Have you gone back and revisited their poems to see them through your wiser eyes? Have you ever found a poem that changed its meaning as you got older? 
let me know. I'd love to hear about it.